call us un-American because uh, people that stood and walked and and they with their faith they they uh, faced danger. And, you know, I mean, I don't know how you can face any danger more danger than a crazy bureaucrat with a gun pointing it at you and a finger on the trigger. And then these the people were were moving that way towards them, moving to bar, to, towards them. They pushed them out of the county and out of our state, and they're gone. But they still have their guns. They, you know, the sheriff never did his duty. The neighboring sheriffs and counties didn't do their duty. These people are still moving across America. They're ready to uh, join with other bureaucratic armies. And uh, uh, these bureaucracies have got their own army. And, you know, you've talked about it with your people. They've, they, they have created probably the strongest army in the world right here within the American people. American people will be faced against American people before long if this is not straightened out. What you say is absolutely true. You know, Glenn Beck, and, and we'll cue this clip up, a few years ago said that the government's planning on staging a new Oklahoma City. Well, basically the Democratic Party are and then blaming him and us, and I agree, that they, they clearly are. Uh, that That's how they want to frame us. But now he's gotten so scared, he's basically agreeing that this is terrorism, uh, that you guys would dare be out there, or that Harry Reid's involved with his sons in land grabs when that's indisputable, and that your land was supposed to be part of the set-aside, not for the solar panels, but for the environmental easement, uh, that they use one part of the land and then use yours as the uh, uh, reserve under the UN treaty. And uh, he basically said we should just lay down and let them run the final family off of there uh, and implied that we would lynch him if we were in control of the country. I don't know if you saw those clips, but we played those last week. I'm not bashing Glenn Beck here. I'm just defending us. I'm not calling for offensive violence. And uh, Cliven, I don't think you're calling for offensive violence. Yeah, let me explain something about the terrorists. You know, Harry Reid and his army set we the people up as being terrorists. And how they did it, they did it by uh, designating a set area. You know, you've heard me call them big pebs where we were able to exercise our First Amendment rights. Only in those areas, they were little, just little pens like uh, 50 foot square. Only in those areas could we exercise our the First Amendment rights. If we exercise our First Amendment rights out on this this great public land of Clark County and, and up on my range, ranch, any place we did that, we would be categorized under home security, home security law as territory. In other words, they've already made codes and laws that if we don't obey them, we are going to be terrorists. So in, in one more sense, Harry Reid is right, according to their law and their court, once we said anything outside of those boxes, we are domestic terrorists. And they, they set us up to be that. And the reason they did that is they figured, under the language, domestic terrorists, they had unlimited power. They could shoot us, they could arrest us, they could... Uh, put her head in the gravel, and they felt like they were covered by their code of law. Clive and Bundy's our guest. Uh, under the NDAA, Obama claims with his executive order he can arrest and disappear and kill any citizen he wants, making him basically God Emperor like Kim Jong-un of North Korea. Expanding on that, we now have the Homeland Security documents where they say land rights groups, veterans, and others are the number one enemy. And now Harry Reid... Leader of the U.S. Senate, more important even than the Speaker of the House probably, uh, number three in the government, uh, undoubtedly number three, saying that you are a domestic terrorist and anyone that engages in civil disobedience is, I believe this is a declaration of war uh, and basically part of the rollout declaring the American people the enemy. Now the White House counterterrorism chief has come out last week. We played the audio last hour saying, don't trust your children, parents, they may be terrorists. Uh, so everyone's a terrorist, but uh, the occupied federal government, sir. Yeah, and I, I think uh, Harry did declare civil war in his language. He, he declared civil war against uh, we the people. And, uh, you know, that's, I hope it, well, that's what he's did doing. And he actually irritated. He's stirring the pot and what um, and I can't understand in any human being doing that, but Harry Reid is doing that. He's turned the pot, 
And he is, you know, I don't know what he's doing behind scenes, but we know what in front of scenes were. We know that they had, uh, these bureaucrats were armed, well armed, and they were prepared to kill. And they were, uh, they were very tempted to kill. And, you know, these people just had courage enough to push them, walk through them and push them out of here. Or they'd still be here and they'd still be te attempting to kill us. Clive and Bundy's our guest. Uh, here's the message I want to telegraph to the feds. You really are run by foreign banks that have signed us on to 1.5 quadrillion. The republic is being overthrown. No one can debate that now. Congress has a 6% approval rating, 9 on the high side. You may not be a bad man or woman, and I'm not your enemy. I want you to have long days, pleasant nights, live long and prosper, to quote Spock. But you're going to push the American people to the breaking point, and you're going to get a civil war that you believe is going to be some glorious victory once and for all, like the Bolsheviks had over Russia. It is not going to go that way. And so I want everybody to realize, not just the feds, but everybody, the point we're at. I am so glad and literally hit my knees and thank God when the feds stood down. They should continue to do the right thing. And, 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 and Cliven, what is your message to the feds, A? And then B, are you aware that 50 state reps and others met uh, over the weekend? I guess it was in Salt Lake City to discuss uh, the western states uh, basically kicking the feds out. Well, the first thing I have to say, and the main thing I have to say, is the same message I gave last week. Uh, county sheriffs, take the guns away from these bureaucrats, these bureaucracies. Take those guns away. Get one county at a time. You, you've got to take them away if you don't want a civil war in this, and have we the people against we the people. It's your job to take them away. And Harry Reid, for hell's sake, straighten up and don't be inciting war upon your people. Well, you know, we got a we got a principle here of let's forget and forgive, uh, and uh, we need to remember that that's one thing we need to do is forgive everybody and all the time. But you know, we're not going to stand for this abuse. Uh, not 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 we the people of America. We will not stand for this abuse no more. And the best way to, to cooperate is give up your guns. I want to understand. I want you to understand that those guns that have been issued to you by the United States government and those guns that you carry out with your uh, uh, with your dress at uh, work, your uh, uh, black uniform. When you carry a gun with your uniform to work, those guns have got to disappear. Now let me tell the bureaucrat: you have a first amendment or second amendment right, just the same as we do. We want you to carry guns. We want you to carry guns as a citizen, but not. Not as a bureaucrat employed by the United States government. You have no jurisdiction or authority. You have no policing power. You have no resting power. You, you the county sheriff of or each county, is the only man with that power. And we, the people, have elected them and pay them, and we tell them to get out from under the desk and protect our life, liberty, and property. And at this moment in America and across the world, nothing's more important than to disarm the bureaucrat. I agree with you, sir. I'm uh, looking at the Christian Science Monitor uh, article, and it says the Transfer of Public Lands Act, signed into law by Utah Governor Gary Herbert in 2012, set the stage for formal showdown with the government by demanding action under the threat of lawsuit. Uh, and the, the Salt Lake City Tribune has an even better article about the 50-plus legislators meeting this weekend calling for the almost 90% of Nevada's federal, 62% of Alaska, 67% of Utah, Oregon 53, Idaho 62, Arizona 42, California uh, is uh, 48, Wyoming uh, is 48, New Mexico 35, Colorado 36. What is the federal government doing having half the land out west under their control and trying... Let me, hmm? let me explain that to you. You say they have over half of the land, but let me tell you something. They're managing you go it. In your, you go back in your constitution in five minutes, you can't find any evidence that says that. You can study that thing for the rest of your life, and that constitution... No, I know, I know, I know. They kept them as territories, and they've been operating right. them as territories. No, no, I know that land's supposed to be state land, and then the state's supposed to uh, give it out to the people. 
And uh, that's what's whoever is productive and proves they're going to use it gets it. Whoever pays taxes gets it. Not a foreign run federal government. I understand that. I want to play you a clip of Glenn Beck here, sir, talking about the Democrats staging terror attacks to blame us. Uh, now he's saying anybody that criticizes the government might be a terrorist. He agrees with uh, Harry Reid, basically. And so I believe through fear, he's caving in and lining up with the other side. Here it is. How can the left win the country? Watch. Cabinets don't, don't really sell things. The president himself has to reconnect with the people. Remember, President Clinton reconnected through Oklahoma, yeah. right? And the president right because now, the he seems removed. And it wasn't until that speech that he re-clicked with the American public. Obama needs a similar, a similar kind of You think of words will work for... Obama needs a similar kind of event. Oh, well, like Oklahoma City. I will be the guy who causes the next Oklahoma City. This is in a letter, an appeal to advertisers uh, of Fox, dear Fox advertisers, read this part of it. No one, left, right, center, wants to see another Oklahoma City. The next assassin may succeed. If so, there will be blood on many hands. They are setting up another Oklahoma City. They are claiming that one is coming and they've already marked the one who caused it. I will be the guy who causes the next Oklahoma City. All right. Now, again, I, I want Glenn Beck to be a good guy and he does a lot of good work. I don't want to be his enemy. But when he comes out and says the Alex Jones group wants violence, I played this last week, don't be part of that group. I'm the one saying I don't want violence. But we can't just have the feds pointing guns at people, shooting a teenager on a bicycle and killing them out there, the BLM, beating people up, tasering people, free speech zones, acting like an occupying North Korean army and, and, and being militarized. And Glenn is now scared and knows that they're getting ready to start the Civil War. And he thinks that he can have his movie production company and write ghost books, ghost written books, and that they're going to leave him alone. No, Glenn, they're going to come after you, too. So throwing me under the bus, saying that I want violence or that Bundy wants it, is not really what's going on. What do you say to that, Clive and Bundy? Well, it's a little bit confusing why Glenn would would say what he's saying. It seems to me like maybe he's wanting, wanting to be the hero here. Uh, the one thing for sure, Clive and Bundy don't want to be the hero here, but I do want to make we the people the hero. And... Uh, I don't know all these all these things. I can't comment and know know for sure. But I do know one thing for sure: uh, that, that we do not want a civil war, and we do not want. We just want a big government calm down here, and uh, we'll work things out. So we're not in the negotiating mood. We're not going to negotiate with big government. We're not going to negotiate with BLM. We're only going to back up and strengthen our county sheriff and hope he does his job. And that's where our Constitution put us. You know, uh, uh, Sean Hannity uh, said our um, militia and the people were the last uh, uh, form of defense. And so I said, no, Sean, they are the first form of defense. And I think that was what we're finding. With we, the people, and our militia here, we are the first form, uh, first force. And our sheriff has got to be right there with us. So that's the way I believe. Well, I got to say, I, I, I want to commend Sean Hannity because he's been really bad on a lot of issues, but uh, he has a lot of courage doing the right thing here. And so I appreciate him being supportive of this. But I think it's because he's a former blue collar worker and understands property rights and understands that they've already ruined everybody else. How big a deal is it that federal judge Jones, and we have the ruling on Infowars.com, said the BLM is involved in a criminal conspiracy to bankrupt every rancher in Nevada. I think that's important evidence, sir. Yeah, you know, I want to go back to Sean. You know, definitely, he's my favorite hero, and he's supported me and uh, this movement, and I, I appreciate him and love him for it. I appreciate, uh, support him 100%. But I was pointing out, Sean, that he was wrong in this one issue, that we the people are on top of the, the flagpole, not not the bottom. We're not the last, we're the first. And I, I use Sean only to, but as that example. I think Sean understood it, and I think he maybe understood it. Well, Clive, I disagree with you. I believe we're the first and the last. Well, we could be that too, but we definitely are the first, not the last. I've got one more question for you on the other side. We'll let you go here. Five more minutes. I want to ask Clive and Bundy about how he expects them to come back at him now since Harry Reid says that they can't let this stand. And then your phone calls straight ahead. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones.
We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. 